Rick back at the naturopath. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Before we jump into this video, don't forget at the end of the video, you can download some free resources that I've created just for you. The Candida Diet and Cleanse Starter Guide, the ultimate Candida uh, shopping list, the diet shopping list, and also the Candida, Candida Symptom Tracker, which you're gonna find very useful. So these are all for free. So at the end of the video, just jump into yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies and you can, down, you can download these things at no charge at all. If you have any questions, remember you can always ask those and either I can get back to you or the team. So thanks for tuning in and we'll catch up with you at the end of the video. It's Mr. Backer here from New Zealand, the naturopath. Um, let's talk about enzymes in the body. So you can read many books about this, all sorts of scientific facts about the isoelectric point of enzymes and you know the heat point. And I'm not going to go into all that crap. I'm not interested in long, falutin, detailed biochemical explanations that oh, go over here and everyone turns off. So I don't even bother anymore. Enzymes are very important in your digestive system because they are what help to break your food down and extract the stuff out of it that your body needs, all right? <clears throat> so if I think about that, if I extrapolate that, enzyme levels are important. I will look at a car engine and say carburetor is important because that's where the fuel goes into, into this gadget called a carburetor. And then from there on, it goes into the engine, it feeds the engine. So. Food's quite similar. Food goes into the stomach and then it goes into the intestines and, you know, into the cells. And the cells are the engine of the body, basically. But for the carburetor to work very efficiently, <clears throat> now I assume that whoever's watching this video is driving a motor car. Most people know what a motor car is. It wheel you turn and the car, all that kind of stuff. And what do you put in the tank? And you guys in the States call it gas for some reason, gas. Well, here in New Zealand, if we say gas, we're thinking of farting or we're thinking about gas from like a gas stove or something. But gas is fuel. Now, you wouldn't dream of putting anything but gas from a gas station in the gas tank of the car, would you? But then why do people put all this crap in their stomach? Coca-Cola, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's not exactly gas, is it? That's like literally pouring sewage down into your gas tank and then wondering why the hell the engine's not running properly. All right? It all starts with eating the right kind of food. That's the point I'm trying to make. <clears throat> your engine runs optimally when you're going to put 91 or 95 octane fuel in the gas tank. Are we agreeing with that? Yeah, you're going like this. Yes, I agree. That's good. Okay. Then if we agree on that point, why can't we agree on the point that in your stomach tank, you put the right kind of gas too? Not sewage sludge from Kentucky Fried Chicken, okay? Boar. Not crap you get out of your gutter. That's sludge from the from the kernel. This, this is junk. So when you put inferior fuel into an engine, it's not going to work well at all. So enzymes in your digestive system work best with natural foods that already contain enzymes. And that's why it's very important to understand that by eating fresh all the time and natural fresh foods that actually grow out of the ground or in the ground or run around on the ground, those kind of foods. We didn't talk of factories with guys in white coats with plastic bottles and stuff with hazmat suits on making food. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. We're talking natural food. So eating these kind of foods like bananas, apples, pears, corn, broccoli, especially the fresher the better, you're putting a lot of food in there full of nutrition and natural enzymes. And those enzymes, by the way, allow that food to degrade and rot and break down. And you'll know this by cutting something and keeping it and watch what happens. It will degrade. Okay, the enzyme levels go down. They start busting that food up. Bugs will come in there. So the fresher the food into your own digestive system is what's going to increase your enzyme levels. So that's number one, you must eat the right kind of foods, meaning fresh, okay? Not processed, not fry pans, not deep fryers. This is not how you're gonna get enzyme levels up. Your body needs to work on fresh natural stuff. The second important point is you have to chew the food really, really, really well. So most people, you go out eating next time and you watch how people eat. 
They don't chew food. They just gulp it down like a, like a German shepherd. Gulp, gulp, two swallows and it's gone down with a glass of beer or whatever. Not many people chew properly anymore, right? Chewing food opens the food up. It breaks the food down. I'm not a biblical person at all, but uh, my brother is a, is a pastor. And I remember him once telling me that there's some scripture that says, chew your grains until they're liquid. So the Bible's got stuff in there too. It actually tells you how to eat but nobody really eats properly these days. And when they do, I think statistics show that a third of meals in the US are consumed in front of Facebook now. So it's another way for Zuckerberg to make money, I suppose, by having some sort of AI installed so you can see what you're eating so he can flash those foods at you. But chewing, 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 right selection of foods. So if you've got poor levels of maltase or you know, lactase or things like that, you can really improve these enzyme levels also by improving your beneficial bacteria counts. And the beneficial bacteria like yogurt, they like kefir, they like sauerkraut, they like foods that really help to boost their numbers up. And they love fresh natural foods like avocados and berries. And these foods will boost up the beneficial count. And the beneficial bacteria make enzymes. A lot of people don't know that. Bacteria also um, help to make B vitamins in the body and fol folic acid, for example. So having the right bacteria in place in the right quantity will infer incredible health to you and also boost up your enzyme levels. A couple of little tips or tricks I recommend is to eat more sour or bitter. Olives, grapefruit, um, foods that people don't like. Uh, the Asian kind of uh, brassicas, bok choy, for example. But all the brassicas, like broccoli, are considered bitter foods as well. So bitter foods, especially lemon and lime, are very good at boosting up enzyme levels as well. So small amounts of these stimulate the digestive system. But if you want to screw your enzymes right up, just keep eating processed foods or highly refined foods. Drink alcohol every day. Have lots of soda drinks and visit the Golden Arches regularly. Your enzymes will come down, down, down. And then you'll just eventually join the pool of people uh, that frequent a lot of these places. People with diabetes and blood sugar disorders. People that you and I um, probably know, but don't want to actually morph into ourselves. We can avoid that by selecting the right foods. But believe me, eating these kind of foods and chewing well will increase your enzymes. Over time, you'll be surprised. Thanks for the question. Things. it's Eric Backer again, the naturopath. I hope you enjoyed that video. Remember, Go to yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies if you want to download my free resources I've created just for people like you. These are things I used in the clinic for patients and you'll find them very useful. It's the free candida diet, the cleanse. So it's a good introduction on how to set your program together. There's the ultimate candida diet shopping list and there's also the candida symptom tracker. Yeastinfection.org forward slash goodies. Thanks for tuning in and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.